Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you what I picked up in the flea market. I bought 20 more dollars of cards and I found an interesting pile of cards and those batches. I totally forgot about this. I might have showed this previously, but I'm going to show you again because this came in four of those boxes. I've been buying boxes at that flea market for a long time. I'm the only non Hispanic person at the flea market. Like I've been to a flea market to buy furniture or to look at furniture, I didn't buy it. I bought artwork at the flea market. I've commissioned a 13 year old to make me more artwork at the flea market. But uh, yeah, anyway, Terminate. So that was a very good find. Ravens, this is a pricey card. I don't know where this came from, but yeah, why not? And then Signets. Yes, these got reprinted, but the originals are the original. I want to talk about Signets being, you know, being one of the more pricey cards that you can possibly find at Common. And the fact that there are so many, as I will show you later, is very good. Now, when we talk about Exalted, that's not really great on this card. Cascade is amazing. Any Cascade effect in EDH is just a lot of fun. So why not pile on your Cascade cards? And then Charms. You know, charms are always very good. Here is a random assortment of Charms. Now, Cascade effects. Right now, you might ask, why are they not so expensive? Because if they're so good, why are they... It's because the cards that make it good are like banned. They banned Hypergenesis. And although this, you can play this, a lot of times they have changed how the card interacts. Uh, most recently with Fuse, I don't believe this works with Fuse anymore. So that's kind of unfortunate. But Cascade effects are just super powerful. And just overall, when you talk about having a large pile of cards of one type, this is probably the type of card you want. Although it has got weaker, like, Cascade as a, me a mechanic has got a lot weaker since they changed how Fuse and all those other things work. It's just, it has this component where you feel like you're getting a good deal. And as a Magic player, why would you not want that, right? Here's some Esper Charms, Jund. Wall of Denial was pretty good. So I'll put Wall of Denial aside. I guess I'll put in a bottom. And these things sell quite easily. I was looking at buy lists. They buy lists for more than bulk. So that's always good. You have your bounce lands, which were also reprinted. So it's not like these cards have not been reprinted. Uh, I'm going to take a stack of the bounce lands away. They have been reprinted. It's just that it's nice to have a large collection of them because you can play popper with them. You can do uh, casual is a lot of fun. Uh, Popper is very fun to play with. Um, these were the original ones, so they're commons. I believe the new ones are uncommons. I can I don't have to check. And this type of effect. So whenever you have an artifact that can produce mana and has a another ability where you don't have to cast it, it's interesting. And I've always liked this card. I always felt like this type of card could be broken, but it was never ever broken. I cannot tell you why. Uh, because I feel like the border posts were meant to be broken. They are in a line with a lot of cards that are broken, meaning they are artifacts, they produce mana, and they have a ability where you can pay one and return a basic land card to your owner's hand instead of paying for its mana cost, which means that if your land does something, you can re-trigger the effect. Cycling is in. Uh, this is one of my favorite cycling monsters because it costs a 1 and it's a 4-4. Four, four. And it's cycling is optional for it, meaning that you can have different... Uh, you know, you can play the black or the red so it can belong in two different decks. Uh, Border Post, again, one of my favorite cards. I love this card so much. Minotaur. Uh, on the lines of Minotaur, this is very good. Whenever it comes in play, there's free damage target creature flying. Somewhat relevant. It does take out Vidalian Click, which is a very annoying card. But mainly you're doing it for the cycling to get the creature in the graveyard. As cycling becomes more and more relevant due to Amaket, these are not bad speculations in my opinion. 
And we have some more cycling. We have one of these dudes. Always good for ED. I only found one of them, so I guess he took them out. A zealous prosecution, somewhat good. Blightning, somewhat good again. So I got all these for around $40. So they were four long boxes, but some of the long boxes didn't have anything. And you can probably see the sh that shards were as one long box. Ravnica was another, Ravnica Descension was another long box. And yeah, probably shards. I mean, these are pretty cool. These are amazing, especially given that there are a bunch of these in play right now. So I'm probably gonna use them at FNM. Uh, border posts, I do like the border posts a lot. I do feel like they have the potential to be really strong cards. Plus, you know, oh, Mage Slayer is surprisingly a valuable card as I found out later. So this is what I got for $40. Yes, it's not like amazing. You're not gonna be able to buy listed for more than $40. But I felt it was interesting to share nonetheless. Uh, and this was one of the better $40 um, purchases. Some of the long boxes did not turn out as well as this one. This one, at least I can feel that there is a chance, right? There's, here's, you have a lot of chances here. You have a chance that the cascade effect becomes stronger, although they are trying to make it weaker. Uh, you have the chance that uh, this card becomes breakable. You never know, artifacts, are, artifacts that produce mana that have alternative cost, it has like a lot of stuff going for it. And then the cycling cards, maybe they become better, right? Is there like a zombie? I think there's a like a zombie cycling card, right? I wish I had a bunch of those. Um, what set was that from? Oh, I don't think it was a zombie, it was a Wraith. Anyway, but Mage Slayer is actually worth a few bucks. The tokens are worth a few bucks. These are all worth like a few cents. So $40, like I guess like it was okay. It, you're not gonna find like the best deal at a flea market, right? You're only gonna find it at, you know, buying singles. Buying this stuff at a flea market is really like buying a giant fat pack. Is this better than a fat pack? Yes. This is way better than the Afro Revolt fat pack or an Alma Cat fat pack. There's no way that Alma Cat fat pack long-term wise is going to outrace this in terms of value just because there's so many copies of everything and should one of these copies spike up in price. Like I have seen commons from Shadowmoor go from 50 cents to five bucks. If this happens to one of these, then you're set. But as of today, this was not a great buy. Anyway, that's it guys, bye. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like one Fire Emblem orb party. And so it's like Fire Emblem is like $42, so I don't feel that bad. Anyway, I'm gonna show you the best box, which cost me $5, and you guys would be really impressed with that box. Anyway, bye guys.